Halo Combat Evolve's 2011 Anniversary Edition promised to deliver a fresh coat of paint to a console classic, an upgrade which would help close the audiovisual gap between it and Master Chief's later adventures released during the HD era. It wasn't an altogether successful endeavour. The update included an abundance of retina-burning particle effects, important environmental details were removed or tampered with, and sweeping colour palette changes altered the tone of certain levels, among many other issues. Too much changed too drastically, to the point a lot of the original's charm was lost in the process. Sure, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary can look pretty pretty every now and then, but in the present, most fans consider it to be little more than an oddity with the 2001 release preferred. Recently, news has emerged that Microsoft may again try tinkering with Xbox's greatest game, with there being plans apparently afoot to remaster it a second time. Before discussing the matter, a quick clarification regarding the different meanings of the words remaster and remake, as both will be used repeatedly during this video. Remasters faithfully upgrade aging video games to make them more palatable for a contemporary audience. They often feature improved visual effects, increased resolution and frame rate, bug fixes, and sometimes updated controls controls, but they don't fundamentally change the game they're based on. Both of Halo's anniversary editions look and sound more modern, but when it comes to gameplay, level design, story and the like, they are essentially identical when compared to Bungie's original vision. What would you have your Arbiter do? Remakes are far more radical overhauls which make sweeping changes across the board, retaining a game's basic concept but reshaping much of what's built on top. They are titles built from the ground up, with modernised gameplay, new locations, characters or enemies, and story beats which play out very differently. The recent Final Fantasy VII remakes are a great example, as are Capcom's efforts with Resident Evil 2, 3 and 4. The treatment Halo Combat Evolved is apparently getting sits squarely in the former category, a remaster, and that is a road Microsoft should be extremely wary of treading. I am someone deeply passionate about Halo Combat Evolved in particular, it's one of my favourite video games of all time and the Halo I personally hold dearest, and even I do not think it's a good idea at all. For starters, there's the obvious and distinct possibility that current Halo developer 343 Industries bungles it, and we end up with a botched remaster for the second time. The fact they mostly got Halo Infinite's aesthetic right, especially when it comes to environments and character designs, provides some hope, but with a less than stellar track record, there's absolutely no guarantee of success. Many fans have already lost patience with Microsoft's laissez-faire attitude towards their premier franchise, and mutilating a treasured title for a second time may well be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Another problem is that Combat Evolved is one of those rare gems where the starkness and simplicity of its visuals are, in my view, a key part of what makes it so distinct. Colours are cool and desaturated, environments sparse and uncluttered, sweeping hills and rocky surrounds being interrupted only by the Forerunner's towering, imposing structures. More detail could be added to textures, locations filled with more trees, rocks and buildings to cut down an empty space, however that would hugely detract from Halo's unique atmosphere. How clean everything is fosters an unsettling and alien mood in the best way possible. It's a monument to the expression, less is more, a contradictory statement in the face of a remaster which will likely be very visually extravagant. Also, in case I've not explained this part as well as I could have, allow me to provide an existing example of both sides of the coin. The PlayStation 5 remake of Demon's Souls is a graphically superb effort which remains jaw-dropping to this day. That's all well and good, but its increased fidelity and tarted up areas also means its atmosphere takes a massive hit, with it feeling far less bleak, desolate and lonely than the PlayStation 3 original. While it's not often the case, there are certain titles which are actually enhanced by their ageing graphics, and the two just discussed undoubtedly fall into that category. The Halo Combat Evolved contained within the Master Chief collection is already a remaster in that it can be played at higher resolutions and frame rates, and it's perfect just the way it is. 
The final hurdle is perhaps the most insurmountable of them all. Halo is amazing from top to bottom, and is just as entertaining in the present as it was back in 2001. However, times have changed, as have people's tastes, and what a modern audience expects from the genre is very different from what Bungie's maiden outing offers. 23 years ago, Combat Evolved was an exciting trendsetter which proved console first-person shooters could provide just as much entertainment as anything found on PC. Nowadays, younger gamers especially might see it as old, slow, and possibly even clunky, an intriguing relic that can still be enjoyed but which lacks the trappings expected of the genre these days. To put it another way, as much as I love Halo Combat Evolved as ferociously as I'll defend it from almost all criticism, taking the game in its current form and giving it another audiovisual brush-up will not be an enticing prospect for many. If Halo was a flourishing series with excellent new entries being released left, right and centre, I'd say sure, have at it, but unfortunately, it's not. It pains me to say it, but the franchise, while still very popular, is a dying one, with no outstanding single-player releases since Reach 14 years ago and a multiplayer population which continues to dwindle. It's not a shot in the arm which is needed, but a full-blown resurrection, a release which not only caters to long-suffering fans, but also attracts a large new audience too. I think we were all praying to the video game gods that Halo Infinite would be the catalyst for that resurgence. You should leave me here with the rest of the garbage. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. Was it a step in the right direction compared to 4 and 5? I'd say yes, although it was nowhere close to reaching the dizzying heights of Bungie's work. Nonetheless, it does provide a platform upon which 343 Industries could base their next attempt at crafting something special, and to give up now would be a great waste. The series needs to look forwards, not backwards, and I still wholeheartedly believe Halo could be revived if they manage to take Infinite's gameplay, refine it, and then transplant it into a Bungie-styled linear campaign. After three failed attempts, attempts to return Master Chief and Co. to their former glory, though that is admittedly something of a long shot. I gave up trying to discern any meaningful method within the madness that is Microsoft's treatment of their marquee franchise long ago, so it may well be that they're dead set on returning to Halo Combat Evolved despite the pitfalls mentioned. If that is the case, my advice to them would be, don't remaster, remake. Similarly to a remaster, I don't consider a remake to be the right direction for Halo to head in, but it is a much more compelling prospect, one which has potential. These are my thoughts. For one thing, I'd leave the overarching story relatively untouched. The worst thing about Resident Evil's remakes is that Capcom has ended up with two separate timelines, as events are so different from those in the originals that in many cases there is no way of reconciling them. I'd hate for that to end up happening with Halo. Extra dialogue could be used to flesh out certain parts of the story, new cinematics could be added here and there to expand on existing events, but attempting to change things to any greater degree is not the correct course of action. Outside material could be used to add colour, think parts of the novel The Flood or the Fire Team Raven arcade game, but that's as far as it should go. The only entirely original story beats I could see working well would be a few brief scenes featuring the Arbiter. As the trilogy stands at present, he's in a weird place where he's absent from Combat Evolved, arguably the star of the show in 2, and then again spends a lot of his time sidelined during 3. It's risky business as he's a beloved character and mistakes could be made, but involving him early on would help better connect him to a wider story he's incredibly important to despite him not appearing anywhere near as much as he should. A really good example of a remake story being handled very well is Dead Space's remake. Some scenes have been changed, but the plot follows the same basic outline, and a lot of the new information serves to expand on existing threads, rather than lots of completely new things being added. That is exactly what should be done to Halo if a remake were to be made. 
Gameplay-wise, I'd err on the side of meddling less, as Combat Evolved is already a reasonably well-balanced game. The pistol could probably be weakened a tad, although I'd be inclined to do so minimally, if at all, but most other weapons function fairly fantastically as is. Adding one or two extras would be appreciated. The sword and fuel rod cannon are the obvious choices, given they're already included in the campaign, except you can't use them, but stuffing the sandbox full of more firearms from other entries should be avoided. The same is true of vehicles. Being able to hijack wraiths is another easy win, as is adding extra opportunities to pilot banshees. I'd not add anything else myself, but I could see a world where including some of the less gameplay-altering vehicles from elsewhere in the series, like the Mongoose, might also work. I know some of you watching are not going to be impressed by this suggestion, but some modern mechanics will also need to be introduced. Sprint is the big one, it's pretty much expected these days, but some additional movement abilities wouldn't go amiss either, as long as they're not completely over the top. I made my point about graphics earlier, so I won't repeat myself here, but to reiterate, they should be conservatively designed to retain the original's foreboding atmosphere. Don't clutter, don't add detail purely for the sake of it, just focus on taking what's already there and tidying it up. This actually may be the hardest part for any developer to get right. The game's atmosphere is so unique, making it look the business without destroying the original's aesthetic will be a tricky tightrope to walk. Infinite is a surprisingly good start, but even that I'd argue is too lush compared to Combat Evolved. Finally, the aspect of Halo which could be tweaked most is its level design. Regular viewers might be surprised to hear me say that, as I bang on all the time about how great the originals is, but there are a ton of ways a remake could tweak and expand existing levels to keep everyone on their toes. I won't list every single idea I have, they could honestly fill an entire video, but I will share an outline of how a few of them should be handled. With each mission, the focus should be put squarely on amplifying what makes them unique. For example, at the end of second mission Halo, you have to rescue three different groups of marines holding out in three separate areas you can visit in any order. You're a sight for sore eyes, Chief. We're in a bad way. We've got wounded here. I'll call in a dropship to pick them up. Each of them could be built out to be more involved, with more allies and enemies featured across larger arenas. Truth and Reconciliation sniping section is good fun, but it's hard to remain stealthy for any great deal of time. Reworking it so that remaining hidden while picking off enemies isn't almost impossible would further differentiate the sequence from others, while also offering those who are mindful of their positioning a well-deserved reward. The number of exceedingly repetitive bridges and circular rooms you fight your way through during Assault on the Control Room could at least be halved too, with more emphasis put on the huge outdoor battles. Those could be increased in scale, with more allies, enemies and vehicles present to really drive home the scale of the conflict on Installation 04. The library is another level ripe for remaking. Keep the ambience at scale and the hordes of flood, but shorten its runtime and add set pieces at regular intervals to punctuate the chaos and you're on to a winner. Again, notice each suggestion I've made focuses on maximising the parts of levels which make them most interesting. Assault on the Control Room is all about big vehicle battles, so the emphasis should be on that. The library's combat is fast-paced and frantic, and so its design should match it, and so on and so forth. I've been thinking about Halo Combat Evolved a lot recently following the news, and those are just a few early thoughts regarding what Microsoft should do. In short, I think they should leave well enough alone and put their minds to moving the franchise forward, but if they do decide to fiddle with a classic, they should remake it instead of remastering it. Frankly, though, I'd rather whoever is put in charge of the next mainline Halo game, whether it be 343 Industries or not, is given the help and resources necessary to create an entirely new title, one which helps get the series back to where it belongs as one of the most beloved, most brilliant in all of gaming. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a good time, do consider liking, subscribing and letting me know your thoughts regarding a possible Halo Combat Evolved remaster, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon.